There is no more superior confidence for a man than one with the self-understanding that he will not compromise himself for the recognized manipulations of a woman and the fortitude to walk away knowing he has in the past and will in the future find a better prospect than her. This is the man who passes the shit test. It's called enlightened self-interest and a principle I wholly endorse. Truth to power. Denying the utility of power, vilifying its usages, is in itself a means of using power. Real change works from the inside out. If you don't change your mind about yourself, you won't change anything else. Women can change their hair color, their makeup, clothes, breast size, and any number of cosmetic alteration on a whim, or as they can afford them. But the constant discontent, the constant inadequacies that they complain of are rooted in their self-perceptions, not how others really perceive them. This is an outside-in mentality, hoping the external will change the internal. And it's just this mentality that lesser men apply to themselves. The only difference being the application. The average frustrated chump, AFC for lack of a better term, has the same problem as the vain woman. Okay, really, any woman. A lack of true self-understanding of their own problem. It's very difficult to do self-analysis and self-criticism, particularly when it comes to questioning our own beliefs and the reasons our personalities are what they are. It's akin to telling someone that they're not living their lives correctly or that they're raising their children wrong. Only it's more difficult because we're doing the telling about ourselves to ourselves. Self-estimation, not self-esteem, never happened spontaneously. There always has to be some crisis to prompt it. Anxiety, trauma, and crisis are necessarily catalysts to stimulate self-consciousness. A breakup, a death, a betrayal. Tragically, it's at these points in our lives that we do our best introspection. We have our moments of clarity, and yes, discover what abysmal, simpering chumps we've allowed ourselves to be molded into. Denial. The first step to really unplugging from our preconditioning, i.e. the feminine matrix, is recognizing that this conditioning has led to the beliefs we think are integral to our personalities. The psychological term for this is ego investment. When a person internalizes a mental schema so thoroughly and has become conditioned to it for so long, it becomes an integral part of their personality. So to attack the belief is to literally attack the person. This is why we see such a violent reaction to people's political, religious, intersocial, intersexual, intergender, etc. expressions of belief. They perceive it as a personal attack, even when presented with irrefutable, empirical evidence that challenges the veracity of those beliefs. One common frustration that game-aware men express is how difficult it is to open an AFC's eyes as to why he's not hooking up, why he's not getting dates, or second dates if he is, why he's constantly getting let's just be friends, or LJBF rejections, etc., and all the flaws in what is really ego investment internalizations. As I'm fond of saying, it's dirty work unplugging chumps from the matrix. And this is made all the more difficult when a person is in a categorical state of denial. People resort to denial when recognizing that the truth would destroy something they hold dear. In the case of a cheating partner, denial lets you avoid acknowledging evidence of your own humiliation. Short of catching a spouse in bed with your best friend, evidence of infidelity is usually ambiguous. It's motivated skepticism. You're more skeptical of things you don't want to believe and demand a higher level of proof. Denial is unconscious, or it wouldn't work. If you know you're closing your eyes to the truth, some part of you knows what the truth is, and denial can't perform its protective function. One thing we all struggle to protect is a positive self-image. The more important the aspect of your self-image that's challenged by the truth, the more likely you are to go into denial. If you have a strong sense of self-worth and competence, your self-image can take hits but remain largely intact. If you are beset by self-doubt, a hallmark of self-righteous AFC thinking, however, any acknowledgement of failure can be devastating and any admission of error 
painful to the point of being unthinkable. Self-justification and denial arise from the dissonance between believing you're competent and making a mistake, which clashes with that image. Solution? Deny the mistake. Attribute it to an outside element, like women won't play by the rules, rather than resort to introspection, maybe I'm wrong about the rules. Therefore, we see AFCs tenaciously cling to a moralistic sense of purpose in their methods, which is only reinforced by popular culture in our media, our music, eHarmony, our religion, etc.